Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. I really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. So today's a little bit different. I don't want to, I'm not building a project. However, it deals with projects in that I, I like to be a little bit more frugal. And if I don't have to buy something, I won't, especially with these prices today. And I want to talk a little bit about capacitors and what I use and how, how I uh, validate a capacitor, which might help you if you're interested in building projects. Now, I'm definitely not an expert on capacitors. I'm just going to show you my experience and how I uh, select capacitors. It might not be right for some people. Obviously, brand new capacitors are the way to go. And I do have some. So these are all generally small. I got a couple of bigger ones in there. These are all small, brand new capacitors. They're either Rubicon or Nishikon. Um, and I have some more here. Now, these are high voltage capacitors for fixing radios and stuff like that, tube type radios. Um, However, I've got a lot of used capacitors uh, in this big drawer here. And these two drawers here are also smaller, maybe less than a thousand microfarad. And then, of course, I've got all of my ceramic. I've got mylar caps, um, but they're all used. And I actually use them a lot. Um, but when it comes to electrolytic capacitors, you have to be a little bit more cautious, right? And that's where I have some test equipment. So I have this ESR meter, or sorry, this ESR meter, and this is a LCR meter. And I've got it on capacitance right now. So I've selected a couple capacitors out of the batch. Now, I'm kind of picky in that I only keep... Um, either Nishikon, uh, Nippon Chemicon, uh, Rubicon. Those are the three top brands that I use. And these are all used. They're all from Scrap Outs. And it's a great source for parts, of course. Is get some old radios, some old TVs, whatever you can get and get parts, much like I've done here. Anyway, um, yeah, so these are um, high grade. I threw out all the crappy ones, right? I didn't need them. They're just taking up too much space. So I've got a couple of bad ones here, and I'm thinking maybe we could uh, just test them, and I'll show you uh, how they're bad. So let me bring you back in in a second. I'll get this set up. Okay, so the first cap I'm checking is this big capacitor here. I got it from somewhere. I don't know where, but it's 4,900 microfarad. And the two test sets that I'm using that I like and I trust uh, when I'm checking capacitors for my projects is this one here. Now, that's a homemade uh, ESR meter. You can get ESR meters now for, who knows, 20 bucks, I think. But I built that one. Um, and I trust it. So the scale, if it's off to the right, if that's zero... That's beautiful. That's perfect. So that's where you want it. I'll show you later with another capacitor that uh, is bad. It reads kind of three or four. Anyway, uh, so that's good. So we're off to a good start with that capacitor. Now let's check the actual capacitance. Okay. Okay, so it's thinking, and it's 6,610, let's say, microfarads. That's quite a bit difference from the 4,900 that it's rated for. However, you have to remember that capacitors, electrolytic especially, the tolerance values are, are pretty wide. Like, you know, they can go from minus 20 uh, to plus uh, 80, 80%. Which is a lot, which would mean that this is in spec, so to speak. Um, now, for me, for my projects, I wouldn't want it because it's way too high. If I had a circuit that required 4,900 microfarad, I'd want to be at least a couple hundred plus or minus, right? So it's a great capacitor, but it's not good for a project. Let's uh, show you another one here. Uh, 
Okay, so this is a thousand microfarad electrolytic, and I'm reading 1115, so that's not too bad. Let's use the SR meter. Okay, and I've got a good ESR. So that's well within spec. It's, uh, what did I say it was? Yeah, it's a thousand microfarad. Um, and it's a no-name brand, at least it's in Japanese or Hong Kong. That's where it's from. Anyway, so eh, maybe I might use that one. I'm not too sure. Um, but it does read good. Let me pick another one. Now this one's old. I probably would never use it. Just because it's old. Uh, what is this one? This is a uh, 500 microfarad. So the ESR meter looks good. It's at zero. And the capacitance reading is 320. So this is 500. Now, oh, what's going on here? Um, it's not touching. Okay, yeah, it's 500. Oh, okay, so that's right on the money. 500 uh, microfarad, and it's got a low ESR of zero, so that's actually a good cap. Um, I might use it if my circuit wasn't critical. Sure. All right, now let's get on to a bad one here. Okay, so this is uh, 1,000 microfarad at 25 volts. And it's reading overload. So that's essentially a short, right? Because I'm, I'm actually shorting out the leads here. Let me just show you. So I'm shorting the leads on my capacitance meter, and it's overload. So this cap, right off the bat, is low or is bad it's shorted out let me show you on the ESR meter and there you can see it's actually reading three it's terrible it's horrible so I would never use this cap of course it's bad and then I have one more it's a very small one now I know this is bad because it's from a batch that I've got that I've labeled bad. And I don't know if you can see that, um, but the top is actually bulging. I, I kept this capacitor for as an example. Um, and the ESR is, is horrible. Look at it, it's barely deflecting the needle. And to put it up, the cap meter okay it's actually reading six microfarad um, it is a 100 microfarad but clearly I'm not going to use this one either um, yeah so that's kind of how I choose my capacitance uh, or electrolytics for projects uh, is I go through this process and look for good ones look for bad ones and um, that's that's how I choose it now I'm gonna try to open up the brown capacitor this one here I'm gonna tear it open and I've got a microscope that maybe I could show you what is wrong I don't know like I said, I'm not an expert. Maybe I can see something inside that would indicate a short. Anyway, let me do that and bring you back in. Okay, so I got the microscope out. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare three caps. I'm going to show you a brand new cap, which I'm showing you right now. And then an okay cap, which measured good low ESR. Um, but then, And there was that bad cap. You remember that one. So the first one is 47 microfarad, 450 volt Rubicon, brand new. And you can see the top right now, and it's wet. And in fact, I remember when I took it apart, 
it was visibly wet. Uh, I wore some gloves, but you know, it left some electrolyte on the gloves. And now I'm showing you the side view of that same capacitor. And you can see it's well infused with electro electrolyte. So let me bring out the OK cap. It measured good. And let's take a look at that. All right, so this is the OK capacitor. Tested good on the ESR meter, and it also tested good on the capacitance meter. And we're looking at the top right now, and you can see in the inside portion of that top view, it looks like it's infused with electrolyte. However, on the outside, it does kind of look a little bit dry, which I'm, sh I'm shocked. I thought the whole thing had to be dry, but apparently not. And right now, you're looking at the side view. Hard to tell if it's dry or not, only because there's some sort of uh, outer a coating itself in type um, a material but if you look at the very top uh, you can see some of the uh, paper and it does look a little bit dry so let's go to the next one the bad one okay so right now we're looking at the bad cap so this measured uh, on the SR meter it was about four to three I know the number doesn't mean much but it's high it's reading high on the SR meter and on the capacitance meter it read a short there was no capacitance, completely short. So there might be something going on inside also. I didn't unfurl the actual capacitor. However, we can clearly see that it's dry as a bone. We're looking at the top view right now. It's dry all, all through it. And right now I'm showing you the side view and it's the same thing. You can actually see the fibrous material and it's not wet at all. And that's probably why it's bad. So let me uh, bring you back onto the bench and I'll conclude the video. Okay, so we're back at the bench. So there's the bad, the okay, and the brand new cap. Obviously using brand new caps is the way to go if you can afford it. Now, it was a bit of an eye opener to me uh, that an okay cap was partially dry inside, but yet it worked and it checked good. And those are the kind of capacitors I've been using in my projects. Well, not all, but some of them. And uh, I really have to be cognizant of, of that when I am building uh, new projects, right? I got to consider how long these caps are going to last, how long I'm going to be around. Um, obviously, if I was fixing something for a customer, if I were doing a repair, I'd always use the brand new caps. There's no two ways about that. But I think for going forward, I think I'll still stick with me using um, used capacitors where it's needed if I don't have new ones and take the risk and see how it goes, right? Um, yeah, anyway, it's a bit of an eye-opener as to uh, high, S high ESR capacitors and what's inside of them. I'm glad I did it, and I hope this information uh, will help you also in choosing capacitors for your projects. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't checked some of my other videos out, please do. I'd appreciate your support. Take care. Bye for now.